Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, Episode 82. In this episode, I'm going to do a solo cast all about one of my favorite topics, message mapping. Now, message mapping is a foundational subject when you're learning about public relations or when you're practicing public relations. It is the art and the science of organizing your thoughts on a sheet of paper so that you can deliver your thoughts and your messages in a way to best connect with your targeted audiences. Of course, you know, if you've been listening to the podcast, that I feel that building a brand is all about connecting with your targeted audience, whether it's through online or in-person methods. And part of that is using the right messages. And a message map is the best tool that I know of for doing that. So this podcast is all about creating the foundation of your messaging, whether you're promoting a burger joint or a software company, or whether you're attracting donors for a blood drive or selling memberships in the Chamber of Commerce. The essence of a brand is connecting with your targeted audiences, and that's why message mapping can be helpful to you. It's about communicating the most important messages that tell the story of your brand and connect that audience to that message. It's about making your story relevant. Your audience wants your story to be part of their story. That's how you make brand ambassadors, people that want to make your brand part of their lives. And it's about everyone in your organization or on your staff or on your team telling the story about the brand in the same way. Consistency is what branding is all about. For years, I worked at Sugarloaf, which is a ski resort in Western Maine, and people there call themselves Sugarloafers because they are the brand ambassadors for the resort. Because Sugarloaf is so relevant to their lives, they make the resort's brand part of their own personal brand. And that's also the key to the hog brand. Do you know what that stands for? Hog stands for the Harley Owners Group. People who own Harleys love the brand so much, they often get tattoos on their bodies or they wear clothing like leather jackets, leather pants with the Harley logo all over it. And so they love that hog brand so much that they want it to be part of their own personal brand, kind of part of their DNA. So if you're working on a brand, whether it's your personal brand or an organizational brand, you want a message map because it's going to help your team to tell your company's story or your organization's story more consistently. It's important to communicate what your business or your organization does and what it represents in the same way every time. That's how you build brand awareness and understanding. And a message map can clarify your message for your targeted audience. It maps out all the most important facts that you as a company or a brand want to communicate about your organization in an easy to follow graphic. That's why I say that it keeps them singing from the same song sheet and it helps people sing from the hymnal like you're in church, like everybody's on the same page of the hymnal. Anyway, 
I digress. So a message map is a great tool for sales meetings, developing content about your business, public speaking opportunities, networking, and especially media interviews. If you're being interviewed by a journalist, they aren't necessarily interested in keeping you on your message. They kind of want to take you off message, actually. But having this message map right in front of you helps you stay on your own message. And a message map's visual format on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. And by the way, there is a template in the show notes for this episode. So you can go to marshallpr.com and click on the podcast and find the template in the show notes. And that's where you can get this template that has a a series of bubbles on a page with the most important message at the center and then supporting messages surrounding it. It should be short and to the point. For example, your key message, which is in the center, could be a 21-word statement, and it takes seven seconds to say 21 words. So that is essentially your seven-second soundbite, or some people might call it their elevator speech. So you would say in an elevator, you know, we do this and this is who we do it for and this is why we do it. And uh, you can also call that your XYZ statement. So we do X, we th- what we do, for Y, who we do it for, so they can Z. And that's the benefit. So we build motorcycles for people who like to ride free on the highway so that they can relive their youth and feel like they're going to live forever. I mean, that could be that could be the Harley statement, but you know what I'm getting at. Harley is a symbol of freedom, and it's a way to escape the monotony of daily life and ride off into the sunset to escape life and, and to experience adventure. So Harley makes motorcycle f- riders feel free and alive, and that's the es- essence of essentially their brand promise. So that would be Harley's key message on their message map. And that would be right in the center of their message map. And then around that key message, you would have proof points or supporting messages that all lead back to reinforce that key message. So keep in mind that a message map should really focus on a company's concern for their customer, or in the case of a nonprofit, the nonprofit's concern for its members or its donors or the people that it serves. If you share points that meet a critical need or concern, your targeted audiences are going to remember those points. And you want to repeat your key message over and over in the same manner. For example, if you're doing an interview with a journalist, they might ask you a variety of questions that you can you might be able to use your key message to answer several of their questions. And in, inevitably, at the end of a media interview, they always say, so is there anything you would like to reiterate or is there anything else you'd like to cover? And then you can say, yes, as a matter of fact, I just wanted to reiterate that we do X for Y so they can Z. You repeat that message. I remember once several years ago, we actually did media training with one of our clients And we had a message map and we had our client memorize that key message. And at that moment, at the end of the message or at the end of the interview, when the journalist from the local newspaper said, so is there anything else you'd like to, uh, to add? And he's, you know, we had trained him really well. And he said, yes, as a matter of fact, I just wanted to reiterate that we do this for this so that they can see and. Amazingly enough, that ended up being the lead of the newspaper story the next day in the newspaper. And I was like, whoo, this is awesome. (laughs) I felt like I could just die and go to heaven right there because my message map was successful. So so that's just a little success story. And and those kind of things make me happy. Maybe I'm a nerd, but it was really awesome. So another purpose to have a message map, and this isn't so much fun as um, as the example I just gave you, but if there's a crisis that happens in your organization, uh, you can use a message map to help pull everybody together so people know what they can say and what they shouldn't say. And again, ultimately, you want to show concern for your customers or if you're in a hospitality business, uh, you know, for your guests. 
I once worked uh, with the staff and members of the board of directors of a private school after they had had a tragic death of one of their students in a ski accident. And they were all in a state of shock when they found this out, uh, that one of their students had passed in a, in a terrible accident. And they called me in and I helped them. Over the course of about two hours, we sat together and produced a message map, which was thoughtful and empathetic and showed that the school had a lot of concern for the family and friends of this young man who had passed. And the primary concern was for the tragedy that this student's family was experiencing and the well-being of the other students in the school. And we also wanted to reassure families and the community that the safety of the students was paramount. So we described the steps that had been taken to try to save the student's life and the level of experience of the ski patrol and the ambulance personnel who responded to the call. So we communicated everything that had been done to assure that safety and well-being was of utmost importance um, and that, you know, this was a horrible and highly emotional experience and that the school was feeling very empathetic towards the family. So ultimately, this message map was not only useful when the headmaster of the school was interviewed by the media, but it also was sort of a cathartic experience uh, for this group of staff and board members to, you know, figure out how they how they were going to respond. It was it was really quite an amazing experience, and this message mapping technique was very helpful. We've also used message mapping every time that we create a Marshall Plan, which is one of our strategic marketing communications strategies that we create for clients. The message map is an important part of the brand platform that we create for our clients. And again, it's it's like providing a song sheet so your staff and your board or your uh, your leadership team can all be speaking the same language. So really, everyone who participates in creating a message map is ultimately going to benefit. Um, you know, the, the people that will benefit most are customers, employees, investors, influencers. Uh, it's going to help your social media. It's going to help all of the uh, your social media messaging and messaging for things like speeches and brochures and website copy. So if you go to marshallpr.com and click on podcast and go to this episode, you're going to see a template there that you can use to create your own message map. And if you uh, are part of PR Maven Nation on Facebook, you should watch in the coming weeks for the launch of my message mapping course, which is going to help you drill down on your key message and all of your proof points, which are the supporting messages that all lead back into your key message. So we're going to help uh, you in this online course to create your own key message and your own supporting messages. And we'll also help you with some techniques so that you can rehearse using your message mapping in an interview situation uh, so that you can be sure that you are on message when you're communicating with the media or your targeted audiences. So I hope that this episode of the PR Maven podcast has been helpful. Um, I'm really passionate about the technique of message mapping. I originally learned about it from a man whose name is Trip Frolicksteen, who passed, unfortunately, several years ago. He, I would consider to be the father of message mapping. He was from St. Louis, Missouri, and he specialized in crisis communications and used message mapping as a technique for preparing CEOs of airlines and other large companies uh, before they had to go on the morning shows to talk about some kind of a crisis or a fatality. So I want to thank uh, Trip Frolicksteen for everything that I learned from him. And um, I hope that this me method of planning out your key messages and your supporting messages is helpful to you. 
as you go forward in your your PR and marketing strategy planning. And I hope you have a great day, PR Maven Nation. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.